Hey guys, how are you doing? I am trying to recover from a long holiday weekend that has been very productive for me now. I'm starting to forget some things like chick flick teal pointer because we're going to need this a ton. I'm going to go through a number of things that I've got going on and give you an inside look at some of the episodes you can expect to see. Um, been a real busy weekend, been traveling. I even got to go to Roy's in Amboy, California, cultural capital of the world. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let's start things off with some good news. Um, the good news is you know that I used to build a lot of cigar box guitars. Every one of them made out of a Camacho 60 by 6 box. Love these boxes. All I use, I've got a whole bunch of them right over there. They're getting harder to find now. But this was my typical look. RV sink drains, a great pickup. Matchbook neck, four strings. Anyway, I got news today. Oh, this was Margaret Garrett's guitar. You know Margaret Garrett? Um, yeah, she was telling a little story with this very guitar before she traded it back to me and got a different one anyway I'll give you a link to that story right up there right about now it talks about Tammy but anyway a longtime friend of the channel and resident of Sardis Mississippi that's right Sardis Mississippi cultural capital of the world sorry Roy's you've been displaced or an Amboy but Every year, C.B. Giddy, a lot of you know who that is. Um, they are a friend to cigar box builders everywhere by being a part supplier and a general supporter of the hobby of cigar box guitar building. Anyway, now they're having an international, not just, I mean, it's the whole world. I think they're going to have a universal or or whatever you call the universe, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't make it to eighth grade. Anyway, they have people playing on cigar boxes, doing video submissions, and our friend Cody Harrell, who has several of my guitars, made a submission. I'm going to give you a link to it right up there, right about now, and if you look in the background, you're going to see the Mississippi Fireball you're going to see a, a license plate that I did uh, for Cody that says his last name on it. And he is playing the Sun House themed cigar box guitar. There's a lot, a lot of mementos in that one. In fact, I will give you a link to that build right up there, right about now. But hey, Cody, thanks. And um, we're going to make sure that everybody gets to see your video I'm slowing down a little bit because we're gonna come up with the third card I've used in the very early part of this game right up there right about now thanks Cody enjoy your music and y'all give Cody's video a like now on to more intellectual stuff before we hit the bench I'm glad I'm dressed for the intellectual crowd today I want to tell you about a new book called Going Up the Country, and it's by David Evans and Marina Bokelman. Bokelman, Bokelman. Anyway, about 1967, they were traveling around and collecting uh, folklore, blues, um, stories. I always enjoy uh, David's writing style because he basically documents an interview, you said this, he said this, they said this. Um, there are pieces in here about one of my favorite people that I've um, studied quite a bit and made a few trips over, Reuben Lacey. And yeah, there's a piece of Reuben Lacey's wood from around Reuben Lacey's church and Cody's guitar. You'll see that again in the build. Hover your eye up there. The Sun House guitar. Anyway, this book was just released by the University of Mississippi Press. It is a good one. There is a lot of stuff, but there is more information in here about Reuben Lacey. And I went on a trip 
there's going to be an upcoming episode because of this book. Get this book. I will give you a link down below. Now, what else do I have to talk about? You know, I think the best thing for me to do is just get to the bench and talk about a few things like Tammy's uh, left-handed ES-175 uh, guitar that I'm building out of a kit from Guitar World. Um, we've got this. Where is it? We're helping Fred Wallachy with this K K150 from the 1950s. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit. And you know, I've been grinding eucalyptus kino till it's running out of my ears, and oak gall ink and that kind of stuff and we're going to talk about a california license plate and then finally we're going to finish with a little trip i took to a place called wonder valley california so let's go to the bench and see what i got going on over here all right here we go let's start off talking about lefty the junk pile arch top this is a guitar i'm building for tammy you all know tammy who is left-handed, and um, this is a, a Guitar Kit World ES-175 type kit with a Florentine cutaway. Uh, this is the same guitar body as the Mississippi Mud Slide that um, Wendy Jean Garrison has down in Mississippi. You know what, I'm going to burn up all my cards right away. There is a playlist about how that guitar was built right up there, right about now. Anyway, this guitar came in with a paddle headstock, meaning nothing had been cut out. So what we decided to do here is some of the old K guitars uh, in the late 40s, early 50s had what was called a Coke bottle type neck shape. And so I've done that here. So we basically traced everything out uh, and cut it down and give you a couple of hints about this before we flip it over. There's a couple of tools that come in pretty handy here when you're doing this kind of work with shapes and things like that. And they are called scrapers. People forget about these. Everybody gets busy sanding and all that kind of thing. But scrapers have an edge. And especially when you're dealing with a radius like this, um, I don't care how good belt sanders are or band saws or whatever, whenever you're making something like this, you're going to get a bias one way or another. So this might be thicker up here a little bit than down here. How do you like this uh, Stumac guitar st workstation? Anyway, nothing like taking a scraper like this and you can start... Oh, by the way, these uh, little clamps are pretty handy when you're putting a cover on uh, the headstock, which you'll see on the other side. Anyway, when you're leveling this out, you can just basically take your hands like this and take a scraper. And if you got a bias here, watch this. You see that? The scraper will take off wood evenly everywhere. So this is pretty good. You can also do the edges like so. Um, scrapers, good deal. Add them to your toolbox. Now, I want to flip this over while we're here. I've got a bunch of stuff here. Again, love this workstation. Uh, but what we did here is keep us in the... Basically cut out the shape. Uh, punched in pilot holes, and then we use the step bit to um, get the, got to make sure I got my tuners in place here. I'm going to use black hardware on this guitar. Uh, we've got a black trapeze tailpiece and black tuners and a very loud car. I remember the first time I couldn't afford a muffler. Anyway, um, use a step bit, drill a little hole, and come down through the wood. And then once the neck is done, then, of course, you put the piece of metal. This piece of metal is from the same sign uh, that we use to put some parts on 
Gallia Volt's value leader. Remember that one? Anyway, uh, that's what we did. We left a, a gap for the nut here. And then once everything was in place, we used chick flick teal screws. Uh, the step bits work great. Um, these tuners they have a threaded part here and a washer. This washer's domed. So we're just basically going to put these in like so. Let's drop everything on the floor while we're at it. And put these on. Now, when you're using uh, this configuration of tuner, you don't need to dig the, or drill these big, giant holes. You can just kind of make sure that the step bit goes in only as deep as it needs to. There we go. Five more and we're good to go. Of course, we secured the metal with chick flick teal screws as need be. And again, these things come in handy lining up everything. Magic marker and uh, a belt sander. But at the end of the day, never forget about these scrapers. Let's tilt this up a little bit. You see this color here? We're going to have to do some more staining here. And that, my friends, is made out of eucalyptus kino shellac that we made ourselves. So let's talk about what I've been doing all weekend with eucalyptus shellac. Okay, we did an episode about eucalyptus kino shellac. Uh, eucalyptus cideroxalin is a type of eucalyptus tree that grows in Australia and that part of the world. And what the tree does is it actually weeps sap out when it's young to make the, the, the trunk of the tree strong and it actually coats the bark of the tree with this resinous substance that's very transparent. Now, if you collect this stuff and you chip everything off of the wood or as much as you can, and you put it in a blender like this, isn't that a lovely sound? You end up with the fines of this resinous, sappy stuff. And if you do it long enough, you can end up with an entire premium saltine can of it. And then you take this stuff by weight and mix one part eucalyptus shellac with four parts Everclear. Now, what inevitably will happen is you will end up having bits and pieces of wood in there. But when you're soaking the uh, eucalyptus kino in Everclear, the Everclear will absorb or dissolve the kino and the wood parts will flow to the top. You don't have to worry about it. Anyway, I've got a ton of eucalyptus kino now uh, and it, it makes for a great color which is kind of depending on the wood again where this color came from and we're going to be using it on the neck. Spent a lot of time doing that this weekend so I've got a great supply of it now. Okay the next thing I want to talk to you about that we're working on simultaneously with all this other stuff is this K model K150 from the early 1950s. We did an episode uh, in our series, A Minute with Fred. Fred Wallachie is actually going to restore this. And I've got a couple of things to do here, including reproducing some ladders up here somehow, using some crafty technique that I have yet to invent. And also to get the celluloid binding off of here. Guys, this is nasty, nasty stuff. You don't want to breathe it. You want, let me show you something very interesting. I had these made for my channel. Anyway, in all seriousness, 
protect yourself when you're using this stuff because it flakes off, it gets in your lungs. I don't want to say as, it's asbestos, but I won't say it's not. I want to show you this. I've shown you this before. This tape holder is awesome for doing binding jobs and whatever, but part of the trick here is we're going to go around and we're going to make sure that we put tape, and this is a pain, and some of this tape doesn't want to bend very well. So you're going to go around everywhere where you are going to work next to the body of the guitar and give yourself a differentiation line. Now, several tools you want to have. These little cutters are great. Once you get that line cut, you can start scoring this along here very slightly like this. Violin maker's knives are the best for scraping stuff away. You can edge binding with them, but one of the best tools is this file that I got from Stumac. And once you get binding out or close to it, you go along and work the channel because getting your channel in the right spot is going to make all the difference in how the binding looks when it goes back in. Another little tricky binding job tool is actually a piece of binding on a screw. The screw doesn't go all the way through the binding, but you'll know what kind of binding you're going to put on it. You're going to get a piece of it, and then you use this as a gauge once you're, you've got the binding out and you're doing your filing because if this fits, your binding job will go good. Now, the easiest way to do this stuff and the quickest way to get in trouble simultaneously is to use a heat gun. Now, if I put my finger up here while I heat this up, my finger will get hot and want to burn before the wood finish underneath does. If you go to heating this up too much and you're using the wrong kind of tape, it will actually pull the old finish off of the guitar. Um, when you're working on fine guitars, you really don't want to do that. But a heat gun can be your friend. You just heat this stuff up. It gets a little malleable instead of being all crumbly. And then when you cut it, it will try to come off in manageable pieces if you scored everything like so. Notice, just put your thumb along the guide. Score it heat it up a little bit, flake it out, keep control of this thing, this stuff, and don't forget, protect your respiratory system. This stuff is nasty. Um, we are going to end up taking off uh, the tailpiece. There's probably a wire underneath there that grounds everything. We want to make sure that that's okay. But we're going to take off anything that's in the way here, including this control panel up here that's a little bit shaky the condition of it. I think it's going to need to be reinforced, but we'll take all that off. I'll do an episode on this to kind of show you, and we'll fill in uh, a bit of the big video on how this is restored that Fred and I are doing with the different steps we're taking. All right, now for the real fun. I went out on a trip, left LA, went down uh, through Riverside County and into San Bernardino County and stopped at some junk shops along the way, got some really cool stuff like this 1933 California license plate. This is in the middle of the Depression when a lot of the uh, center part of the country, especially agricultural workers from the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma. When I worked for uh, the oil field company, rigging company, Bill Jackson, it was actually located out of Elk City, Oklahoma and Clinton, Oklahoma around there was the middle of the Dust Bowl. It's kind of funny how this co stuff comes back to me. But anyway, I did some junk shops. I actually used to move date palms out of the Coachella Valley and take some of these side road, roads back, including going through places like Joshua Tree National Forest and Amboy, which is where Roy's is. Check that out. That's a cool place. Anyway. Um, there's a place out there called Wonder Valley where um, they did some, allowed people to have five acre homesteads back in the 50s. And you drive through this and it looks like a bunch of uh, abandoned 
400 square foot cabins, five acres apart. So went out there and spent some time out there. It's very peaceful and salvaged some wood. This is very aged wood. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this stuff together after we take the nails out of it and uh, uh, press it and then run it through a planer. Now, if this stuff is starting to deteriorate, deteriorate, I can use epoxy resin and stuff on it. But you know that we've taken... Wayne, I haven't forgot about you, buddy. It's still here. I, I'm just working on things. But showed you how to make oversized uh, boxes for these old oversized plates that aren't the same size as a modern plate. But anyway, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our Oak Gall ink coming out of California oak trees, our eucalyptus shellac, Kino shellac, and um, get a uh, headstock made out of this Wonder Valley Wonder Wood and um, cover that up with a piece of this. This looks like old trailer house material, siding or something from the 50s, I guess. And we'll cover, cover, cut it up, cover it up. And uh, I think we're going to make ourselves a California-themed guitar. And then, of course, I found some other cool stuff. Tammy's guitar. Let me grab it here. She's not going to want a three-way switch. So there's a hole right here that we're not going to need. And I've shown you another episode how to mount this old amp gauge out of a 30s model car using a little template that you clamp to the guitar. So we're getting way out in the weeds here, but um, that's what I'm up to. That's all I'm up to and more. All right, guys, there we go. Uh, I did this little video to kind of mix it up. Maybe you'll get some ideas out of it, but mainly I'm getting so old I can't even remember what I'm doing, so I'll watch my own video and run up my own hit count and then try to figure out what's next in my shed. Hey, don't forget to watch Cody's video. I'm going to give you a link below, and there was a link up there. Hover around up there when you see that eye pop up. It'll give you a drop-down. Um... David Evans' book, Must Have, anything that he has written, you can get copies of the stuff. Uh, Ledbetter's book, Nothing But the Blues, is a good one. You've got the Sun House interview in there where um, Sun House tells everybody about Reuben Lacey. So I've been following that path, and I'm going to take you on another trip. Again, a lot of stuff in this episode you will see again. Hey, get to Roy's before... If you want to see desolate, you want to see no foliage, you want to see the bottom of the earth, you want to see no lights off in the distance except for freight trains for 60 miles anyway, that is Amboy. They have cool, cool hats. I've been putting by that place for 35 years and some going back to, again, the days where I moved date palms. Now, for a real treat, I mentioned Wonder Valley. Uh, there's a bunch of these little homestead cabins. I drove by them again 35 years ago, wondering what they were. 29 Palms is there. The military base is there. I thought they were temporary housing for soldiers. Again, there's a whole story behind it. I think I'll give you a link below so you can check out that history. It's very interesting. Anyway, we found one of the cabins there, and I'm going to close this episode out. I always take a resonator on the travels, and we put Tam in a chair and she's going to close us out playing some Resonator in a Wonder Valley cabin. Let's <laughs> go watch the Wonder Valley Wonder Tammy uh, play a Resonator guitar in one of these shotgun shacks. Hey, give me a like. Uh, give me a subscribe. If you like this kind of stuff where I just ramble on about different stuff, uh, let me know. Give me a comment. But anyway, hit it, Tam.